So I watched today's movie early because um, tonight is the Golden Globes and I wanted to get it out of the way. So I watched, uh, based on a recommendation from a friend, I watched um, Diane Keaton's Hanging Up, which came out in 2000. And it's based on a book by Delia Efron and the screenplay is by Delia and Nora Ephron, and it stars Meg Ryan, Diane Keaton, Lisa Kudrow, and Walter Matthau in his last film role, and a little bit with Alan, I mean, Adam, Adam Arkin, and um, um, the kid from As Good As It Gets. And um, if you look at the, like, critic reviews, it's just abysmal. It's like, everybody hated this movie. And I don't really, like, I don't really understand, because I, I thought it was a great film. I really enjoyed it from start to finish. I mean, totally, it goes back and forth from comedy to drama, but, like, so does life. And um, I, had, I was reading the, the negative reviews because I like to do that, especially when I enjoy a film, I want to see why people hate it. And because um, I'm like, well, what's wrong with you? And I had to stop reading them because there was too many people using the word shrill. And I just hate it when people describe women as shrill because it's like, how do I put this? There's so many depictions of women in film that aren't really like women in real life. Women have high-pitched voices often. When women are upset, their pitch goes higher. When I, well, my pitch is always high because I have a high-pitched voice. <laughs> so maybe I'm always shrill. I don't know. Um, when three women get together, especially sisters, and they're fighting, they're going to be a little loud. When a woman's going through an emotional crisis, like I don't know her father dying and she's upset, she's going to be crying and and panicky, and her voice is going to be at a higher tenor. Sorry. I'm sorry women are like that. Oh, my God. Get over it. That's how women are. That's how women in a crisis are, and that's how our voices are, and you can need to just get over it and stop using the goddamn word shrill. Okay? Stop it. And if that's your only reason for not liking it, Fuck you. <laughs> okay, fuck you. Also hate the word mawkish. Like, no. I'm sorry that it's sentimental. It's about a person dying and a woman dealing with her selfish sisters and herself being a little selfish and her father dying. It's gonna be goddamn sentimental. Yeah. Wow. Sentiment. Okay. Anyways, now that I got that out of the way, I liked it. I love Meg Ryan. I wish she was in more movies. Again, because she's so good. And I always love watching her in movies. I've loved every movie I've seen her in. I've never seen a Meg Ryan movie where I was like, fuck Meg Ryan. Like, no. I love Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan for Queen of Everything. Like, be in movies again. I miss you. Um, I also really like Lisa Kudrow in this movie. She's so funny. She's like... There's just something about the, the way she de delivers lines that are just so perfect. And then Diane Keaton's more like a cameo. She's only in it a little bit. Um, oh, and I read a bunch of other reviews that were complaining about them being on the phone all the time. That's the point of the movie. The point of the movie is that she keeps trying to call her sisters to get them to come visit her father, who's dying, and they don't believe her, and they're too sucked up in their lives. And it, it was 2000, so everybody was starting to have cell phones. Yeah, wow, people talk to each other on the phone amazing that's that makes the movie terrible because people never talk to their sisters on the phone no no one ever used a phone to call a family member in their entire life ever i hate i hate critics sometimes um we're okay so and then yes walter matthau is a, a difficult character like he's playing a jerk and that's also sort of the point is he's a jerk but he's still their father um, and there's this great scene with Cloris Leachman. She plays the mom who who left, um, where she talks about how how she's from the era where every women were all expected to have babies, and that was supposed to be their life. And she confesses to Meg Ryan at one point that she thought that's what she wanted because that's what all the women, all her friends, all the girls that she knew wanted. And she realized that that was not for her. And we're slowly starting to realize that, you know, because they were always like, well, some men aren't supposed to be fathers, but all women, no. And we're slowly starting to realize that, you know, men and women both sometimes shouldn't have children. They're not emotionally equipped for it. They don't need it. They don't want it. And they shouldn't be parents. And it's sort of great that we're finally sort of acknowledging that. 
Um, and it was a, a great scene because you you were it was tough for her to say to her daughter, and it was tough for the daughter to hear. But they both needed to hear it because suddenly, once you hear that, then it's not like what did I do, you know, anymore. So I thought I really appreciated that scene. Um, uh, oh, I was going to say there's like barely any men in it. Like Walter Matthau is in it a few times and there's another doctor and then Meg Ryan's husband. And that's about it. And like maybe 5% of the movie has men and the rest of the movie is just women talking. And it totally 100% passes the Bechdel test. Like there's there's a lot of just women talking about their lives, women talking about their uh, family as, as sisters, um, all kinds of stuff. I just thought it was wonderful. Um, what was I going to say? So it's a great movie. I watched it on Cinemax Go, so I don't know if you have Cinemax Go, you can watch it. Um, or Max Go. Uh, I recommend it. I know that a lot of people are afraid to watch films that critics hated, but sometimes, um, I feel like people just miss what a movie was doing. And sometimes the whole boat, like, everybody misses it. And they just, you know, jump on the pile of, well, everyone else hated it, so I'm going to keep hating it, too. Also, 2000, if you look, there's, like, 100, I found there's, like, 105 reviews. Three or four of them are by women. Now, some of the women didn't like the movie, too. But, like, only four women reviewed it. It's a little hanky there. You know, there's a, is it Manola Dargis said, I think. Um, I think it was her, but I can't remember, that most movies are made by men, for men, and are reviewed by men. And that's part of what I'm trying to do this year, is to shine a light on movies that are by women, for women, and a woman talking about it. Because that's a whole market that's so ignored. Like, this movie was released wide. This was came out in February in 2000, and it was released wide. Do you know how many movies in the next six months, so January, February, March, April, May of 2005, that's five months, are going to be released wide that are directed by a woman? Do you want to know? Three. Selma, which started out in uh, Limited last year, and then it and then went wide uh, Friday. Fifty Shades of Grey, let's, I'm not going to talk about that. And um, Pitch Perfect 2. That's it. Three. Uh, and co-directed, I guess, if you count Jupiter Ascending. So, uh, three and a half. Three and a half. Out of, mm, there's wide releases, there's usually three. Two to three a week for five months. So, what is that, 12? I'm trying to do math in front of everybody. Oh, my God. So, 12 a month, five months. is 100 movies, right? 50 movies? God, I can't do math. 50, 60 movies. Okay, 60 movies. Three and a half. This is ridiculous. Um, that was a, this is a, that's not really having anything to do with hanging up. But I loved this movie. I, thought, I think it's great. And um, I wish Diane Keaton directed more. Um, and, and everyone just, let's send a bunch of flowers to Meg Ryan and tell her to come back. I'll write her a script. I've seen most of her movies. I know what she can do. I'll write her a script. Meg Ryan, come back to us. Um, anyways, 2000, directed by Dan Keaton, starring Meg Ryan, hanging up. You'll probably enjoy it.